Hey everybody, this is Quebex. I wanted to show you a, a process of this piece. I don't um, record a lot of video, but I thought it would be interesting to show you how uh, I set up Clip Studio and, and how I work. So what you're seeing here is Clip Studio Paint EX, I think. It's not Pro, but it's uh, the latest version. And I'm a traditional artist by, by trade, so I didn't learn uh, digital natively. I've transferred a lot of my skills into digital, and I still kind of use a, a, a combination of both, but in this case, we're going to talk about digital. So I wanted to focus your attention over here to the uh, layer palette area, and I use a bunch of layers, and I group my layers into folders because it makes everything really easy to organize. So I'm going to hide all these and show you how it all started and go through the process to show you how it is finished. There will be a time lapse uh, on this and at the end as well. Of course, like anything, we start out with a blank canvas. I'm creating this piece at 300 DPI, 11 by 17, uh, because that's the size that my standard prints are on. So I start with a very loose sketch, which looks like this. So I come in here, I use my G pen, I select a color that will be different than what I uh, I'm going to do my finished piece on because I don't want to, you know, confuse the stuff. And for this stage, I actually don't use any stabilization because I like the loose um, sketchiness of it. And my brush size is usually right around 40. And a nice easy thing is if you, I'm using a Mac, so if you use your, your brackets up and down, you can adjust your brush sizes with your, your bracket keys, which is a candy, uh, a handy shortcut. So I do all this sketching, I, I get the basic idea, and then sometimes I use a 3D model to check my proportions, right? And in this case, I have a skeleton 3D model that I just bring in and I make sure that, you know, I'm using the proper leg, you know, how long would this arm be in, in real life and make sure I've got my proportions correct. And I just kind of use it as a guide. It's not a really great model. It's not a lot of fidelity to this, but again, it's really just for a proportion and, and a, a check on myself. I try not to rely on this because I, I learned my anatomy before I had this model, but rib cages are, are, are really difficult <laughs> uh, to get right and look right and not cartoony. So by having this model, I can sort of position it and make sure that I've checked my anatomy uh, you know, and this even isn't this isn't even perfect anatomy, but it works for me. So once I get to that point, I uh, group all these things in a sketch uh, folder, right? So you can easily kind of turn the stuff on and off if you want to. And you know, I'll leave the sketch open for now, so you can see how I broke out the line art. So I started this uh, with the line art, actually with the parrot, believe it or not. So I cre created a whole new section of stuff for the parrot where I really go to tighten up the parrot's line work. So I come in and I work a little, I work to refine the line work of the parrot a little bit. So you can see how it gets confusing that you have all these layers kind of going on at the same time. So I'm going to hide the sketch layer of the skeleton. So you can see now I'm refining the, the work a little more. And I like using this navigator because you can get right in and see exactly what you're doing and draw up close. So you can see I, I do a little tighter pencils from that loose sketch, but not again, not super tight, but just to kind of define the feel of what I'm looking for. From that point, I go in and ink, right? So I use, all I use for my inking is again, I use a pen and I choose my color, and I stick around 40, and then at this point, I'll turn on stabilization, yeah, maybe around 45, because I want a little bit of stabilization, but I don't want it to be too smooth. So after that whole area is done, I'll do a, you know, I'll do a check against the sketch to make sure that it's where I want it to be. So, you know, uh, and then this allows me to just kind of move the position of the parrot wherever I want with the, with the, the move tools over here. And when I'm happy with that, I will hide the parrot and begin work on 
the other sections of it. Now I've broken down the, into sections. I have the, the sword hand, the skeleton, the hat, the patch, and the parrot. And the reason why I have these is because I wanted to be able to work on these as independent units and I wanted to be able to have them layered. So I think the next thing that I worked on was the skeleton. And I, I again, I went in and I uh, did a little firmer sketch. So you can see I, I did a little more defined sketch here when I started filling in some of the details and things that I wanted. But again, it's not perfect. It's very sketchy and, and loosey-goosey. And it's not until I come in with my line work that I really begin to tighten all of this up. Now, you notice there are some details that are aren't, still not filled in yet in, because I have added in some of that in its own layer because it required a, a technique that I use to... You can do a, th a feature in here where you can, in your layer, create a style for to have everything on that have an outline. So I used, I drew these and I had them automatically create an outline. So that was a, on a different layer. So that came out well. And then I realized that I wanted to, I didn't quite know what was going to happen up here with the hat yet. So I decided to sketch out the hat. And very, you can see I very loosely sketched out my hat idea before I started it. You can see there's some more detail. And you notice some, some more detail kind of showed up elsewhere in the drawing. It's because I messed up. And <laughs> I sometimes you forget what layer you're on and you start drawing. And normally it's worth like coming back in and, and fixing it. And in, in this case, I was like, uh, you know, like you could see, for example, I was in the hat layer. And I started filling in all these blacks. And I went, oh, man, I'm in the wrong layer. It's fine. It's fine, right? So I, I filled in some hat detail, and I created some detail with this bandana. So that's all well and good there. It, pretty simple. I found some reference for a classic bandana and kind of used the pattern of that offline. So the next thing I worked on in this regard, let me get rid of the sketch here. So now i got to do the sword hand. So initially, I had kind of drawn that drawing, and yeah, that's fine. So you can see it really filled in with some detail uh, afterwards. Nothing revolutionary there, but you can see in this blade here going across, that is a good example of when it's worth to put your line smoothing all the way up because you're going to go all the way across in this long arc. You, you want to have a nice smooth line. So that's what I did. And this is just stippling. Stippling is just a, a dotting technique with a pen. So you just kind of dot, 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 dot. Uh, it's it's you use various pressures to get different size dots. It's it's totally fine It's not a brush or a filter. It's again still just G pen I tend to not use special brushes or I tend to not use built-in textures or or any of that It's I think too much of it is becomes not your drawing anymore So the whole piece together right now were, will look like this clearly there's uh, uh, there is no background here so with the parrot I decided to create uh, another layer with a white background just to so you wouldn't see through to the other stuff uh, I also wanted to do uh, eyes so I created a new layer on the skeleton for eyes I didn't kind of like what was going on here with this eye so I went in and created another layer and put an eye patch on him and you can see I, I follow the, the method here is where I do a sketch first. And it was very minimal sketch, of course. Uh, and then I do a line. And again, I had to put a background in there. So you can actually see a little more of like what the patch. Let me zoom in here. You know, so I do my sketch here and then do my line work. And then you can just hide the sketch and add a white background behind that layer. And then you have your eye patch. And again, what I had to do... Also, as if you know, if you hide your canvas, there is no sort of background, right? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a flat background. So I just went in with a, a white color and colored it in old school. And as you can see right here, I uh, missed the spot. <laughs> so let's go in here. Let's turn this down. Do nothing. Let's crank this up. Let's make me look, make sure I'm on the, the right layer. Background flat. And we'll just color in the white. So sometimes, even when you're going to do a tutorial, you miss parts of coloring it in. There's nothing worse than like getting ready to go to print with a piece, and then you have realized you totally forgot to do a thing. Uh, I know uh, carpentry terms is like measure twice, cut once, but it's sort of sa the same idea for uh, print pieces where it just 
double check, right? So you don't have to make multiple revisions. If you can just sit on it for a day and then come back to it, you know, you're fine. That's actually not the end of the piece. There is going to be a physical component. And another thing I like about Clip Studio is I can kind of play around with ideas. And one of the things I was thinking of is doing um, some barnacles and tentacles. And with the layering, you can put things in the foreground and the background and not necessarily have to, you know, mess with the original artwork. So you can see here that I'm playing around with an idea of adding some tentacles and I'm also going to maybe play around with adding some seaweed. And once I print, I'm going to print this on a fluorescent paper and then I'm going to use um, paint markers to uh, hand illustrate different things onto it. And this was just sort of my iteration of it. So this isn't going to be a, a color piece when it's done. This is going to be a black and white printed piece on a colored paper. And then I'm going to hand embellish the details on it. So I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, please be sure to follow me on Instagram at Quebec, on Facebook at Quebec. Uh, I do have a uh, TikTok, but I don't really use it. And uh, Twitter is dead to me. So uh, thank you for watching. And uh, check back another time for another tutorial. And I'll put a uh, time lapse at the end of this so you can actually see the whole process being drawn.